change this evening we are discussing the relevance of relevance and significance of films and binding together <coughs> this bewilderingly diverse nation of ours contrary to the disdainful dismissal of their role some decades back the popularity reach and huge impact of cinema is now universally acknowledged in india by all including the stiff call on mandarins of south block who concede that films are a powerful medium of soft power diplomacy in different parts of the world much beyond the spread of indian diaspora barring the channels devoted to news and current affairs 80% programs on television including singing and dancing competitions are directly or indirectly based on films no wonder come election time all party type who retired and semi retired film personalities to boost their electoral fortunes from prathviraj kapoor to nargis to sham benegal to shavan azmi javed akhtar and rekha several film personalities have been nominated to rise up from time to time in some others like Satwan Sinha, Hema Malini, Vinod Khanna, Jaya Prada have taken the plunge in the electoral battle and succeeded. And some iconic veterans in the South, like Kamala Hassan and Ranjit Kaun, are flirting, flirting with the idea of taking the plunge. Films, as he's already said, are the most effective means of promoting any and everything. The cinema opens up new worlds. Makes you look at life in a different way, understand people and issues, ideas, ways of living, cannot possibly experience in a single lifetime. <coughs> When I discovered Asian cinema and I started showing Asian films and writing about Asian films, I discovered Asia, all these different countries which I really knew nothing about, even though I travelled a little bit in them. It was only when I started looking at the films from Indonesia, from Thailand, from Korea, from, uh, discovered so much and learned and understood so much of the world. It is the most powerful means also of looking within yourself as much as the world around you. But the power of cinema is really given the importance it deserves in India. It's very popular, but no one looks at it seriously as a means of communication and understanding. Um, and, and a lot of the films, even today, they're, they're you know, as she said, they're bringing different parts of the country to you. Because for the longest time, Hindi films were like a mini India of their own. They were not set in any region or you know, it was like a microcosm of India. Somebody was just called Ramesh or Nita. And you never knew where they came from. Probably North India, I'm guessing. But uh, they were like a small world of their own, like a mini India of their own. Now I think we have a lot of, oh, you know, we set characters in specific regions. They have backstories. There is much more granular um, slicing of, um, you know, what a film looks like, who are its characters, and how it's all set in a particular place. And I think that's important to. But you know, when I see a film like Bajrangi Bhaijan, I feel really happy because I feel okay. Somewhere the big blockbuster masala film is alive and it's not yet gone. And I think you need these pan-Indian films with a pan-Indian narrative, um, you know, with with perhaps big stars to make them, you know, attractive uh, to audiences. With great music, which I am a big, big uh, fan of, and I think Hindi film songs are the most unique treasure we have in the world. And I don't understand filmmakers who say, oh, "Why do we have songs in films, and we should have songless films?" I mean, sure, if you're making a thriller, maybe you don't need a song, but uh, there's something so special to our films, and it is the most magnificent legacy of Hindi films. So I don't know why we should even want to wish that away. And uh, I think it's like the soundtrack of our lives, and particularly when you have a song which is a patriotic song or a song about national integration, it there there is uh, the feeling it evokes in you is so special, and you know you can feel close to tears or you can feel really moved or really touched. 
Uh, and that's a really special quality. So, so I... There, there was, uh, in those days, a, a, a foundation laid for the evolution of Indian cinema where the obvious theme was to transcend the immediate barriers of merely the narrative and to convey a larger sense of belonging to a nation which has just won independence. And to my mind, that in itself is not something that can be criticized as being didactic or sermonizing, but actually it was fairly entertaining. And those were films that made you think, they made you, gave you a sense of belonging. Very often, for many segments, they gave you a sense of identification. Uh, they identified you with causes which you believed were right. And that also contributed then to the overall feeling that a new nation has been created which needs to be integrated uh, after many years of servitude. I must say that along with films, and they played an extremely important role, and I said it's because of the popularity of the medium, the, 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 the association of, of, of glamour with films, the, the lyrics the lyrics of films, um, the, the music of films, they became, uh, in a sense, uh, beyond a the point, they be it became uh, part of a certain national framework. Um, so, Rendra Kumarji's uh, this national integration doesn't apply only to Muslims and Hindus. I think that's a very narrow view. One is, of course, the religion, which is made into a big hava and a big... Uh, Put. My take on this would be something different, but before that, I want to give you a little history of my little uh, brush or non-brush. Could have been a big brush uh, with films. Uh, as, as sort of, I've been approached by Yash Chopra and half a dozen others at different times in my life. 